Imagine a world where lasers could shoot down ICBMs. In 1983, it was dismissed as science fiction, but what if Star Wars was less a dream and more a terrifyingly accurate prophecy? We journey back to the strategic defense initiatives of the past, revealing how those initial concepts fundamentally shape the national security landscape we navigate today. In 1983, President Ronald Reagan stunned the world by asking that exact question, proposing a space shield that seemed pulled straight from a movie. The world immediately called it Star Wars, and most dismissed it as a dangerous fantasy. But what almost no one knew then was that the ghost of that idea would go on to shape America's military for the next 40 years, all the way to today. This is the story of how a cancelled Cold War dream never really died, and how its legacy is now driving the hunt for the ultimate defense shield. For decades, the world lived under a terrifyingly simple agreement. Mutually assured destruction, or MAD. It was exactly what it sounds like. The United States and the Soviet Union each had thousands of nuclear missiles pointed at each other, ready to launch at a moment's notice. The only thing keeping the fragile peace was the ice-cold guarantee that if one side pushed the button, the other would be destroyed in the inevitable retaliation. Security didn't come from defense. It came from the promise of revenge. Then, on March 23, 1983, Ronald Reagan went on national television and proposed a radical break from that grim logic. He challenged America's brightest minds to build a system that could intercept and destroy ballistic missiles before they could ever reach the United States. His ultimate goal, in his own words, was to render nuclear weapons impotent and obsolete. The project's official name was the Strategic Defense Initiative, or SDI, but the Star Wars nickname was the one that stuck. The vision was breathtakingly ambitious, a multi-layered shield to stop a full-scale Soviet attack. It involved futuristic concepts like space-based lasers, particle beams, and even swarms of small orbiting interceptors that would later be known as brilliant pebbles. The idea was to hit a bullet with a bullet, or in this case, a laser beam, across the vastness of space. The backlash was instant and fierce. Scientists called it technologically impossible and wildly expensive. America's allies worried it would shatter the delicate nuclear balance, and the Soviet Union saw it as an offensive threat that could start a war, not prevent one. Critics also argued that deploying such a system would be a clear violation of the 1972 Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty, which was created to stop exactly this kind of defensive arms race. In the end, the grand, impenetrable Astrodome over America was never built. The technological hurdles and the sheer cost were just too high. And when the Soviet Union collapsed, the main reason for SDI seemed to vanish with it. In 1993, the program was officially restructured and the Star Wars era, as everyone knew it, appeared to be over. But the story doesn't end there. SDI didn't just disappear, it evolved. The original SDI organization was renamed the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization, and its focus shifted from a massive global shield to defending against smaller regional threats. Then, in 2002, after the US withdrew from the ABM Treaty, the organization changed again into today's Missile Defense Agency, clearing the way for a new generation of missile defense. Research from the SDI era became the direct technological foundation for the systems America relies on today. The ground-based mid-course defense system in Alaska and California is designed to intercept a limited number of long-range missiles, particularly those from threats such as North Korea. The Navy's Aegis ships are equipped with interceptors to knock down missiles at sea, and the mobile THAAD system can take out ballistic missiles in the last phase of their flight. These systems aren't the science fiction of Star Wars, but they are their direct descendants, born from the research it pioneered. This 40-year journey shows how a single bold idea can evolve, adapting to new threats and new technologies. If you're interested in how history and technology intersect to shape our world, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss what's next. Now, four decades after Reagan's speech, the ambition for a total shield is making a comeback. Threats have evolved from traditional ballistic missiles to highly maneuverable hypersonic weapons, with competitors like Russia and China developing them. In response, a new vision has emerged. While not yet an official program like SDI, the concept has been dubbed the Golden Dome. 
The Golden Dome is a proposed multi-layered defense system intended to shield the US from ballistic, hypersonic and cruise missiles. Invoking both the ambition of Star Wars and the success of Israel's Iron Dome, this concept aims to integrate existing defenses with new technologies. This idea calls for a large network of space-based sensors and interceptors using artificial intelligence to create an impenetrable shield over the country. Proponents, including defense contractors and administration officials, frame it as a necessary evolution for a new era of global competition. And yet, the central question today is the same as it was in 1983. After decades of research and hundreds of billions of dollars spent, is a truly impenetrable defense finally within our grasp? Or does the pursuit of the ultimate shield simply provoke a new, more advanced, and more dangerous arms race for the 21st century? The ghost of Star Wars is still with us, and its future is yet to be written. To better understand where these emerging threats are headed next, be sure to watch our related video, How Space Wars Will Change Our Future, here on the screen now, which examines the next frontier of global conflict and its implications for US national security. Thanks for watching.